Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is an informal session here for the Camera Club of Richmond. We're going to go over our end of year procedures and the process and what goes on and all the things and hopefully answer all of your questions that you might have about entering end of year. And this is, so I can state for the record, this is 2021. We're in September and of course, October is when everything starts happening. So we wanna get you ready for that. And one of the things I thought might be kind of good to do is I made up just a really quick poll and I know most everyone who's on the call here pretty well, but just to get a little bit of feedback from you of where you are in your camera club of Richmond um, journey, I guess I should say. So this is a quick little CCR end of year competition questionnaire. Just a, a few quick questions, whether you have submitted photos before in monthly evaluations this year, and then whether you've entered an end of year competition in the past. And then to start to plant that seed that we were discussing a little while ago about where you think you fall amongst the, the groups. And you know, to, as a quick reminder, in the past we had two groups. So we had our B group, which was generally our newer photographers, people that were new to the club. And then we had our A group, which was a more advanced. As, the, as we have grown, I believe we're up to 112 members now, but we're, we're pretty well over 100. We had gotten some feedback about the two groups just not really being sufficient for that many people. Plus the fact that if you excelled very quickly that first year in the B group, then you are immediately shoved up into the A group. And we were getting um, some feedbacks from folks that, oh, I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet. So that's why some of the changes that we'll talk a little bit more as we go forward. So thanks everyone for sending in your um, responses to that poll. And I think we're still learning here. I think if I hit end poll, it should show everyone the results. Give me a thumbs up if you're seeing some kind of a little chart or something on your on your screen okay. on okay. the results. Okay. All right. So it looks like every, most everyone has submitted things to monthly evaluations and have entered in the past. Okay, so we've got some seasoned veterans there and, and a couple of newbies. So that's this is good. This will help us pace what we're going to talk about today. And it looks like people are in that intermediate advanced stage of where they feel like they are um, with their photography journey. And I'm right there with you. Okay, I am going to stop sharing this and hopefully turn off the poll. If it doesn't disappear, I think there's a little X in the upper corner that you can... Um, you can get rid of that poll. So I thought what I would do, I suggested that um, folks look, look at our um, web page and see the information that's, that's out there. So that's what I'm gonna start with right off the bat. Now with this dark background, I don't know how easy this is gonna be for you to read, but I thought it would be a really good background for you just to talk about what the end of year competition is. Um, so as many of you indicated, you joined in our um, evaluations. We have six a year, um, different months. We generally don't do one in January, but we'll do maybe February and skip March, April, May. But anyway, we wanna have six throughout the year. And we usually try to get them all completed by August so that you've had a chance to get your images in and then you can think about what images you wanna enter at the end of year. I try to describe them to folks as being the preliminary rounds, if you will, for end of year. So it's a chance for you to put in two photos and have them evaluated by either an artist, an experienced photographer, or a lot of times we have professional photographers. This year with um, Zoom and our fabulous COVID confinement, we were able to reach out beyond our borders and we brought in a couple of folks from uh, far and wide to be able to evaluate and give us different perspectives on our photos. We, we love our local guys who um, evaluate for us quite frequently, but it's kind of nice every once in a while to get a different perspective on things. So those six evaluations, that gives you 12 images that you've submitted throughout the year and gotten some feedback on. And consequently, there are 12 images that you're able to enter in the end of your competition. 
where we'll talk a little bit more about, well, do I have to do all of those 12? We give you some leeway. There were some things we call wild cards. So, so we'll get into that a little bit more as we, as we go on. Just to start off with what they, what's there in front of you, in the past, before the pandemic, we were able to do prints. But unfortunately, this year, with trying to bring judges to Richmond, et cetera, et cetera, and you know, just the physicalness of being together in a room confined, the board decided that we'd just stick with digital again for one more year and keep our fingers crossed that maybe next year we'll be able to do prints. So we are just doing digital. Important dates. The deadline for submitting those will be October 16th by midnight because Michael turns into a pumpkin after midnight. <laughs> they, they're going to our digital director who bless him, he is here on the call tonight. So Michael Orr is our digital director. So when you send those images in, it'll be going to digital.ccrba at gmail.com. And Michael is the lucky recipient of those hundreds and hundreds of emails and photos. So he makes sense out of all of that for us in the time frame between October 16th when they're due and when the judging event will take place, which is November the 13th. And that is a digital judging that we will do. We, we kind of invented this thing last year because we had to with, with, um, with everything being digital and judges being, I think they're in Maryland. Um, I think we've got yeah. some judges this year coming from Maryland or Connecticut. I, I'm not Delaware. sure. Delaware. Okay. Delaware, somewhere up in the Delmarva area up there. But our wonderful, wonderful PSA representative, Carol Hageman, secures our judges for us each year. And she's, she's done an awesome job. We find, we find three judges. And these are folks who know Camera Club of Richmond as a camera club, but they don't know us individually with our work because we want to bring in a fresh eye in other words, someone who hasn't seen those evaluations or evaluated those photos throughout the year. So we bring um, three new people in and they do this judging event virtually on November 13th. It's really pretty cool. Um, we do it over Zoom and Michael put together these fabulous spreadsheets that we use Google Sheets and we have the judges go through, they look at each picture one by one, category by category and each judge will assign a number score to those photos. So they can go anywhere from three, which is the low end of the scale, all the way up to nine. And so if you could do that quick math, your lowest possible score would be a nine, three times three judges, or a 27, three times nine. So three times nine is 27 for the, the top end on that scoring range. And the, the judges assign those numbers, and then as they fall out, that's how we assign first, second, third, honorable mentions, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll get a little bit more of that lately, but, but that's when that will all take place on November the 13th. So it's really, really important to get those images in. And as Michael says, the sooner, the better. And I believe he already has um, some submissions from several folks. Over a hundred. Okay, that's awesome. Right. And there were some that had some issues. And so because they submitted them really early, I was able to work with the people and everybody's so far, at, you know, with the exception of some that just arrived, uh, they're all in. So yeah, submit early. And if you have any kind of, of issues with it, we can definitely work it out that way. If it's, it's like, you know, like school, the last, if you submit everything in the last day it's due, well, there's, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, ugh, that's not, so, you know, and there's no chance to correct it. So <laughs> that's right. Okay. Um, so just to kind of scroll through and hit some of the highlights, um, as we said, it, the scores are, are given on all the entries that come in. And then we have an awards night, the, other, the next date to be um, cognizant of and put on your calendar is in lieu of our regular camera club meeting on the second Wednesday in December. This year it falls on the 8th. So we will have our, our CCR meeting will actually be the awards presentation. So Michael does this fabulous PowerPoint show. We'll be able to run through while we have our little social hour and you'll be able to see all the pictures that have come in. And then once we get to the presenting of the awards, 
then we'll go category by category and you'll be able to see you know which awards won in in the different categories all righty so i'm gonna scroll on through here and just basically say you know if, if you have any questions there at the bottom it says please you know check with one of our board members you can you can click that link there on the website and get the full list of everybody our pictures our email addresses so you can get in touch with us if you have any questions on that. So with that little bit of an overview, we can go directly to those competition procedures from the link there. You see, I've got that, but I actually have them up and running. So um, I think I'm gonna have to stop share in order to be able to take that up there. And I see Elaine has joined us. Elaine, welcome. I think she's one of our newer members. I am going to bring those procedures. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's good to have you. Hopefully, you know, we're not racing along too quickly here. And as I said earlier, if anyone has questions, please jump in, stop me. We're being very informal. I'm going to go back to the beginning here. Uh, Karen, I have a question. Sure. Um, uh, is the scoring, is this a, a new thing that you're doing the scores for each image or do you normally do that, do that every year when you're scoring? Great question. With we, judges. Do that. we do it every year, but it, it's always been, I, I don't know, in my mind, I think of it like the secret sauce and it really wasn't secret. It's just that it never had been communicated before. And as the board was talking through all of this stuff, I, I sort of brought it up and said, you know, people might not really realize what's going on behind the scenes. So every year, th this is exactly what happens. Oh, okay. It's just that last year was new because it was on Zoom and we had mm -hmm. to reinvent the process a little bit. But in the old days, the judges would physically travel to Richmond and Leo would be there and all the prints would be laid out in the church on the tables. I think that I, I never witnessed it before it went to Zoom. So I don't know if Michael, you were involved with it the year before. I guess they oh, yeah. had yes. they had little um, devices where they would enter the number. Yes. I'm gonna yeah. let you tell tell the the old well, way. Well, yeah, and and one of the key criteria, and it's one of the things we that, that, that when Cameron was talking about the spreadsheet, one of the things we managed to preserve is the judges don't know what the other judges are assigning. So the judges' numbers that process hasn't changed in years and years. Um, but the judges are all judging independently. They have no clue what the other judges are assigning. So it, it you know, it, it preserves the, the uh, integrity of their uh, opinion of mm -hmm. the process. And mm -hmm. yeah, the, 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 the three through nine and all that is identical to the way it was, it was done back when we were doing, you know, in physical, in person, like she said, at the church. Um, but there is a device and they had it in their hand and they would, it, they would click their number and it would display right. on a on a, an LED display uh -huh. and they wouldn't see it and then we'd have people write it down and 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 judge that way so oh, okay. um, but that process yeah has not ch changed okay. at all you also have a question Karen about the banquet I have a question about the banquet oh yeah in I'm the sorry. chat oh thank you yeah once I pull screen share up I don't well wait a minute Maybe just basically ask it I think the plan is, the question was, are we going to have the banquet this year? And I, uh, given, I mean, we were kind of keeping our options open as much as possible, but given the way, the fact that uh, University of Richmond, the last I heard, still had not opened up their facilities, which is where we normally do it. And given the Delta spread and all that, I think technically we are still considering it as possibility, but I think from a practical point of view, it's very unlikely to occur. Right, I think um, Doug Turner is an alum of the University of Richmond, hence the, the reason we were able to do it there two years ago. He got us a pretty good deal on that. And Doug's been having his ear to the ground. We've been talking about this since probably March to see, you know, if like Mike said, they they were going to open things up and be able to do it. So, you know, we're still holding out, but I think, you know, hey, it's almost October, and you know, it'd be really tough to try and, and pull it together again. So, unfortunately, it looks like no banquet again this year. Who would have thunk it? You know, way back in March no, of 2020, yeah, that we'd 
we, you know, we sort of figured, okay, well, one year of this, but holy moly, here we are. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, any other questions since we're kind of in between here? Okay. The procedure is an act, it's a, the online one is a PDF file with some nifty little things that I figured out how to do here. So I'm going to jump around a little bit because I can. And um, rather than run through it bit by bit, let's see if I can find my scroll bar. There we go. I wanted to, since we've been talking about judges, I'm going to go down to the reference section and give you a little bit of back, more background on things. And then we'll get back into the nitty gritty. And as I mentioned before, if you came in with just one question or two or three and we answer those questions, don't feel like you need to hang around. You will not hurt our feelings a bit if you say, oh, I'm good to go and you drop off the call. So, you know, that's fine. I don't want to waste anybody's time, but I'm going to try and run through it where it makes sense, at least in my brain. So from a judge's point of view, so we've got all these judges and they're given numbers. Well, what are they looking for? So hopefully this will help you as you go through and say, what pictures do I want to submit this year? So number one, they're looking for what we call that wow factor, the overall impression or impact that that picture makes. And, and I've seen it in person. I was actually um, privileged to go and watch a VPPA judging several years ago. And there were people were allowed to sit around the perimeter of the room. And I remember there were a couple of times when something would pop up on the screen. We weren't supposed to be making any noise, but you would hear people go, wow. <laughs> I wish that was my picture that they're going to wow on. But that's the story. You know, does the image tell a story? Does it grab the judge? You know, that's the number one thing that we ask our judges to use. And we give them this sheet right here and say, this is what we want you to judge on. And then number two, of course, technical factors. Um, if it's out of focus, yeah, they're probably not going to like it very much. You know, does the depth of field add or detract from the picture? Is the exposure correct? How did you use your lighting? What is contrast, color balance? Or if it's black and white, you know, is, is that appropriate for the image? Um, and again, it's back to that story. What is the story that's being told by those technical factors? Then number three, creativity. Is it an original, fresh outlook on something? Or is it just simply a picture of Main Street Station? Um, you know, we saw one like that in the last evaluation. And I believe our, our artist uh, made the comment that well, it was, a, it was a different view. And you, someone, the artist, the photographer brought in some other aspect to that and added a little more creativity to that picture. So that's another thing you want to consider. Composition, uh, we've all probably heard those, those, at the front door. those rules of composition. Um, did we follow them or did we break them on purpose to tell a different story? So they want to look at the elements of the image and are we drawn into it? Um, are we using S curves? Are we using triangles? Are we using circles where our eye will circle within the picture? So they're, they're looking at that composition as a whole. And then finally finishing, and again, we're in digital, so we don't have a, a physical print for the judges to look at. But if you'll remember back, for those of you who attended that um, training session that Anthony Rumley did, he talked about how to put the digital mats on our pictures and add that little finishing touch. Um, borders, vignetting, that sort of thing as well. Now I will add, because the board talked about this after the last evaluation where the new evaluator with a totally different opinion, nobody's wrong, nobody's right. She just simply had a different opinion she commented that some of those digital mats were distracting. Um, keep in mind, she's looking at it from an artist gallery perspective that if you had that and then you hung it on a wall, that might not work out very well. But we will inform our judges who are gonna be judging that we've done some, some training on that. People are gonna be using digital mats and to keep that in mind and not you know, detract from the picture because some will have them, some won't have them. Um, but, you know, there's some cases where a full bleed all the way to the edge looks great. There's some others that just beg to have that little digital mat around there. So those are the five things that the judges will be looking for as they're assigning their scores. And I'm going to move right on into that because I mentioned the word several times and I think we've had a couple of questions about this. 
there are categories. When we enter the photos throughout the year, we simply are turning two photos in to have them evaluated. At the end of the year, because as we said, Michael has hundreds of photos coming in, we wanna put those into the various pigeonholes of our categories. And the categories that we use at end of year are in alphabetical order. Uh-oh, I didn't fix this. Oh no, <laughs> I thought I caught it everywhere. Anyway, the very first one should be animals. So down at the bottom, that talking about that tiger on your African safari, in the old days, we were calling it wildlife. We simply changed the name of that category and it will be animals. That one slipped through about five different editors. So the very first category would be animals. Second category would be architecture. Um, obviously anything, buildings, bridges, et cetera, cathedrals, whatever. Flora, plants, flowers, trees, et cetera, anything that would be growing in the ground. That is your question. And then moving on landscape, obviously that, that makes kind of sense, either, either something out in the desert, the mountains, et cetera. It could also be a cityscape could also be a landscape picture. If you're shooting the Richmond city skyline from across the James River, that could also go into the landscape category. Karen? Yes, sir. Uh, you have a question pop up from Anita. Is, would a duck, cat or dog picture now be animals rather than wildlife? Um, that's a really good question. When we talked about our portrait category and we took dogs and cats out of portraits, um, we decided that they would be in, in pictorial, but animals, I right, tell you what, let's go down and read, reread the definition, there we go, of the different categories. If I can find that, hang on. I'm thinking that dogs and cats are still supposed to belong to pictorial. Michael, what do you think? I, I believe that's the case, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, let me go back. I got to go back to the table of contents here. I would think they'd be under animal. Most people would think that's an animal, a dog or a cat. <laughs> that's just me <laughs> off the top of my head. Yeah. I would never think of pictorial for a dog or a cat. I mean, I don't know. When you, I mean, am I the only one that thinks that way? <laughs> animals. So here's our definition for animals. Okay. Animal photography traditionally refers to images of undomesticated animals. I was wait, I was couldn't remember who uh, left that in there. That's the so key, like, undomesticated. Yeah, yeah. Right, and the uh, reason I, being is, you know, there are a, a few people in our club that do go on these wild, wonderful African safaris, and they really are capturing animals out in their habitat. Um, but there are a lot of us that just go to the Richmond Zoo, and we can get a pretty good picture of a giraffe um, at the Richmond right. Zoo. What we're hoping is to not show the cages or the buildings or the man-made things that are around them, hmm. but the people who are out there doing the safaris are going, wait a minute, they're not wildlife if you're shooting them in a zoo, they're animals. So that way we felt like we could, we could combine and make everybody happy, maybe, <laughs> to call it animals and then still take the domesticated animals the horses, the dogs, the rabbits, you know, the, the pets, if you will, and put them in pictorial. So hopefully that makes sense. I think that's um, gonna confuse a lot of people, but yeah. I, I know one, uh, one, when I was taking a photography class at John Tyler, the instructor said that uh, you could not include animals in a zoo, cage or no cage in, mm -hmm the wildlife category wildlife. you know because right. which, you know. yeah which is why the this was the name yeah. change was done there was an image submitted a while back and it was an otherwise wild animal but you saw a very small part of a blanket in the photo and it, because yeah. of the criteria the judges were given that picture was an otherwise it was a good picture it was it was rather it would got a, a low score so this was to address the fact that not everybody has the resources necessarily to shoot wild animals in the wild and try to be more inclusive to allow more yeah. submissions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and there, there was a group of us that argued that 
portraits of dogs and cats were truly portraits. portraits yeah, that's and true. We got voted down because <laughs> yeah. they said portraits have to be people, and that was a change that was made last year or the year before, I think. Yeah. So, so we you just really had to do go have with to read all these details, the descriptions of the category to get it correct. Exactly. I'll just assume, like that's right. <laughs> my dog. I'm gonna put that animal. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go from this page uh, now since I, I fixed it on this page. So animals, again, is our first category. And you see the abbreviations there in parentheses. Those will come back into play when we talk about how to name the files. So it, it'll be right here at your fingertips if you need to go back and reference it. But again, architecture, um, buildings, man-made structures, bridges, those kinds of things. Um, I'm going to skip creative art and come back to that in a minute because there's some basic categories and um, that one has a little bit different rules applied to it. Flora, again, plant life, trees, flowers, bushes, shrubs, etc. Landscape, let me see if I can scroll down here, there we go. Again, spaces within the world, I mentioned earlier, you know, Grand Canyon, seascape, mountains, and also could be the Richmond skyline. So anything that's showing the, the something in the world. Portraits, back to Linda's point and Linda's question, photograph of a person or group of people that captures the personality traits or faculties of the subject. We also expanded that a little bit to say street photographs that might be telling us that story of that individual would also be considered portraits. So in other words, you don't have to come into the studio, sit under the lights and have a professional photographer, you know, take your portrait. That is a portrait, but street photographs can also meet that um, and qualify as portraits. Then pick, whoops, went too far. Pictorial is what I call the catch-all category. <laughs> so for those of you who have kind of taken mental notes here, that's a really big category. So a lot of things wind up in, um, in pictorial. Still life, um, a casual picture of someone, maybe event type photography. Pets, again, will, will fall into pictorial. Some street photography falls here, travel, photojournalism, it's kind of a big catch-all category. So those are the basics. Now to double back to our creative art, we have some general guidelines on those basic categories where we, we don't want you to take those pictures and run them through 18 different filters and tweak them and Photoshop them and do all this crazy stuff. We want those to be pretty pure photographs where maybe you've lightened them a little bit or you taking a telephone pole that's sticking out of somebody's head, you know, you remove that, but nothing major. We want those to be realistic photographs that have not had a lot of post-processing done to them. Whereas creative art is free for all, you know, whatever you would like to do. I've seen some things that Anita has done in the creative art realm that are just fabulous, where you're combining multiple photographs and adding a rainbow from this picture to a, a, a harbor scene from another picture and doing all kinds of really wild things in, in Photoshop and some of the other um, softwares. Karen, Karen, can I jump in for one second? Sure. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a word to everyone is that um, the judges do notice when you do this in the other categories to excess and um, they will say that and they they have made comments in the past about too much photoshopping in a specific category so that's if you're doing that the creative arts is definitely the route to go to put it into because there is no uh you know markdown for it there but and the judges are pretty astute and they will pick up on things that you, you know, if, if you do more than, like she said, just the basic, you know, traditional type things to a photo, you know, if, if you've done any, you know, any, anything a little above and beyond that, you might want to consider sticking in the creative art category for that reason, because the judges will sometimes mark it down if they see that otherwise. Right, exactly. 
So likewise, the comments that we just made about creative art apply to those three assigned subjects that you experience throughout the year. And, um, and I realize some of our newer members may not have been around for some of these assigned subjects. So what happens at the end of each year is the board gets together and says, aha, what can we do to challenge folks next year? And we come up with three um, special things that we want to make an assignment of. And there will be a specific month that we are asking you to submit one photo in that you used backlighting. Or another one we did this year was looking up or looking down. And we had people that um, you know were up on a ladder or in a skyscraper and taking pictures of the ground or they were on the ground shooting hot air balloons up in the air. So that was another one. And then low light was our third one for this year. We've, we've done some pretty creative stuff in the past and the board, board can get real creative with some of those ideas. But they're announced ahead of time, you know, what month it is and one photo that you're invited to put into that special category. And they're special because you can do anything you want to with them. And we've seen some really creative things. So no holds barred on the assigned subject category. You can do combining of multiple images, you can change colors, you can do whatever you want, just like in the creative art category. So those are the, the special ones. And within each of those, we also, except, I'm sorry, sign subjects we don't, we don't differentiate black and white and color, but in the other ones, we'll do all the black and whites, pictorials, portraits, et cetera, and then we do the colors, pictorial, portrait, landscape. So we do separate by the type of photo, whether it's a black and white or a color photo. So as you're looking at your photos and trying to figure out where they belong, this will be a really good guide for you to follow to try and figure out where they need to go. If you still have questions, and I've done this several times for folks and I'm by no means an expert, um, but I can give you an opinion and you can feel free to check for other board members, but people have actually sent me images and said, what do you think? You know, it was a butterfly on a flower. Um, you know, is it animal or is it floral? And, you know, and I'll give them my, my best advice and say, you know, why don't you ask two or three other people and see what they think. Um, so I'm perfectly willing to do that. I know Michael has done it. You know, some of our other folks that are even more seasoned pro pro photographers would probably be happy to help you try to decide where your things should fall into those categories. All I'm right. I have a, yeah. a question um, on the assigned subjects. If you did not enter one that month, can you still enter one as that assigned subject? No. Yeah, that's a great question. Unfortunately, no. Let me see if I can go down here to our questions and answers at the very end. Um, there. I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy. <laughs> I right, hear you go. The rules relating to assigned subjects. They have to be submitted into the image evaluation for that subject. And you may not enter a wild card in. So if you if you missed out on the backlighting, you can't throw one of your wild cards. We'll get into that a little bit later um, into that assigned subject category. What we did have a question come up just the other day and, and we all went, hmm. If you entered something into thinking it was going to be a signed subject, like it was backlighting, and after the judge talked about it and you looked at it, you thought about it again, it's like, no, I want to put that into another category. Maybe I want to put it into architecture. That is allowed. Um, we, we kind of went through with our lawyer hats on and said, okay, the, this rule says that and that rule says that. And there's nothing that says you can't do that. So if you intended be an assigned subject and then you change your mind you can submit it it would be a standard image which means it went through the evaluation as opposed to a wild card now since we talked about wild cards here might as well go ahead and cover those so what is a wild card a wild card you're allowed five so again we said you you put 12 images in through the evaluations throughout the year yeah and you are allowed to enter 12 in the end of your competition. But suppose the judge just really romped on one of your images and when it went up on the big screen, you said, oh, why did I put that in? That, I really, I don't like that image. I don't wanna submit that image. You can kick that one out 
and submit and substitute a wild card for up to five of your images. So in other words, you could have seven standard images and five wild cards. You could have eight and four, um, you know, 11 and one, however you want to do that. And if you're brand new to the club, you could still enter the end of your competition, even if you haven't attended any evaluations and you've got those five wild cards that you could put into the end of your competition. And I think last year or year before, we did have a couple of new members that came in late in the year and that's what they did. They just put in their five wild cards and you know, took their chances on, on earning some, some awards and some uh, points on, on those images. So that makes sense. Any other questions on wild cards and standards and, okay. And I did mention, I see the color and black and white item is, is there also. So yeah, there is, um, there are those two se segregations on color and black and white. So if you had two really great pictures of the Grand Canyon and one was color and maybe this was looking the other direction, you could enter that one in the black and white area into that black and white segment. Karen, yes, sir. Been on something too. Um, black and white also to the judges, it can be sepia, it can be black and white, it can be any monotone. What they will and have done in the past is if it looks mostly black and white, but there is a certain element of color in it, they will mark it down badly. So black and white, like I said, the, the sepia tone or anything like that, or what's a cyan tone, mm -hmm. those are acceptable, but the judges will mark down for any color element in a black, otherwise black and white photo. So it's perfectly acceptable to take it and put it in a color a category if it's mostly black and white and you have you know a highlight red or something or even uh, faint colors but i have seen them mark it down badly so don't mm -hmm. assume that because it's mostly black and white it can go into black and white it has to be completely black and white right and they can get really persnickety we found out too yes they can <laughs> <laughs> and we have no say in how they do it yeah, we're, we're just sort of along for the ride once the judges take over. So um, I do have a question. Yes. Um, the, with the judging, do they are the, do we find out how they scored each picture, our, our own picture? Well, that's a really good question. <laughs> or do we just board. say, you know, we, it, we submitted it and it won or didn't win uh, and we don't know what happened? Michael, you want to take that one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Historically, that has been the case. The board has been talking about trying to arrange for some kind of feedback mechanism so that people actually can see how the judges have, um, uh, you know, evaluated their photo. We can't necessarily give you the reason because they're going through boom, boom, boom. But yeah, we that is there's some technical challenges with doing that. But yes, that has certainly been discussed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would make it a learning experience, I believe. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's the main reason why yeah. we're looking at it. Right. Yeah, and that coming from my background, the first job that I held on the board was education director. And, and I was pushing hard. I said, it's feedback. It's just like you go, you take a test in, a, in your class. Did I get an A? Did I get a B? Did I get a C? You know, how much did I learn? How much more do I need to learn, et cetera? And, and it's just, it's, a mound of data and to try and you know sort through it all but it's definitely something that there there's a contingent of us that are pushing toward can we get those numbers can we get that that real feedback um of course you win first place you know where you stand um but unfortunately you know that's only a few few and far between on those first place ribbons but anyway or certificates i should say not ribbons so karen oh, i have a suggestion maybe the club should consider uh, joining the uh, IPC image uh, competition website group that allows participants to uh, enter their images into that system. And you watch the judges score, you see the numbers that each one gives your image. So you know exactly where you stood in the uh -huh. judging process. And it would be a lot easier for Michael too, not to have to worry about getting all these <laughs> <laughs> stuff in yeah. order <laughs> yeah right. but i'm sure you have to pay something to join it but i mean it's like 
hundreds of camera clubs that are members of this right. and all photography associations and VPPA and PPA and every state organization that has a camera you know, photography program that does image competitions and have, has judging. They have their rules, how you submit it online and the naming and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. you actually can see your score because it's recorded automatically when the judges are looking at these images on the computer and they hit the button or whatever and, and the score comes up so mm -hmm. you know what you received. Yeah, I think someone approached us with that at the beginning of the pandemic and yeah. we thought we thought about it. So we have kicked it around, but I wrote that down so yeah. we can I don't know what that. it costs, but I'm a member of it. I mean, I have to pay. Well, it's free to um, to see some of it, you know, but I have access to 50,000 images across the country that use this program and I can go and watch any right. image competition in any state, you know, you have the dates when all these things are gonna show up. So I can actually watch them myself and, and see the critiques. And sometimes they do discuss an image when they disagree and uh -huh. try to con convince the lower score to bring their score up. Maybe they see something in the image that somebody missed, you know, or they see a technical flaw that doesn't deserve a really high score. So they'll point this out and say, well, did you see this? And uh -huh. sometimes they'll raise the score or they'll lower their score depending on the debate. So that's kind mm -hmm. of interesting. And that's how you learn too, when you watch this stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I pay like $13 for a quarter to watch, to be able to have access to all the images to look at. Not that I have time to do that, but I could if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be on the computer yeah. all day looking at that stuff, you know. But it, it is interesting when it's your own your own club doing the evaluation, having okay. your work evaluated. Yeah, great, great idea. We yeah. may we may look into that next year. Yeah. You're right. I, I I remember there was a cost. I don't yeah. know exactly. Yeah, I don't know what it would be for an organization. I have no idea. But yeah. But for a person just to watch it. It's free if you have images in the program, you know, mm -hmm. to submit something, but to have access to all of the images, you have to pay something. Cool. All right. Sounds yeah. like it would satisfy my inner nerdiness. <laughs> yeah. And you can see all the images yeah. that were submitted for the competition. You don't see their name on the image, but you can see the people in your club, you know, that have submitted images. So mm -hmm. you can see which ones are pets or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. ahead of time after they've been submitted and watch them being judged too. So you see what everybody else's image is scoring as well. So okay. it's kind of, kind of interesting. That's good. A learning thing too, you know? Okay. So. All right, we will definitely take that under advisement for next year. Uh, sounds yeah. like a good plan. Just so I pointed out, in case you didn't know about it, hadn't heard about it, you know? Okay, thank you. All right, well, let's uh, go back to the beginning here. And now that we've gotten a little bit of background of what's going on. For those of you who've been around before, let's talk about some of the changes that are happening this year. And one of the big ones that I think has, has been a little bit disconcerting to folks, but really isn't that big a deal, um, the new group designations. I think I mentioned at the very beginning where we used to have the, old, the B group, the folks that were new to the club, um, not as seasoned photographers, and we had the A group. So it was either A or B. Well, because we've grown, um, our membership has grown and people want to be able to make that transition from you know, a lower group to a higher group over a longer period of time, we decided to go with three groups. So we now have the novice intermediate group, and we're calling that group N, the advanced group, which is group A, which is probably gonna be the same people that were in group A last time. And then the expert group for those who you know, frequent um, winners of the competition, or they sell their photo photographs or, you know, whatever. The beauty of all of this is that we're allowing everyone to self-select where they want to be this year. So for right now, there's not a whole lot of difference. If you want to stay in the A group, then stay in the A group. If you got pushed up to the A group before you thought you were ready, hey, it's okay to go back to novice intermediate. In fact, I've talked to quite a few people that have said, I really don't think I'm ready. And we said, that's okay. You know, if you want to be in the novice intermediate group and hang out there for a little while longer, you know, put an in in that naming convention when you create your file name. 
So no shaming, no, no issues with that, just where you think you belong. The next year, we will start to look at the numbers and figure out if people really do need to move um, one way or the other. Um, so that's where we come into the, um, we'll talk a little bit more about how we're assigning, if you're winning, if you're winning first, second, and third places, then we're gonna start to assign credits to you and accumulate those credits. And we've got a better gauge as opposed to, oh, well, you've been here in the B group and, and you won eight different awards. And, oh, next year you're an A. And that's kind of how it worked in the past. So we're gonna work with you a little bit more on, on moving you up. So again, that's simply your choice. If you, again, wanna to talk to one of the board members where you think I belong, we'll be glad to, to talk that over with you. Um, one other slight change that we're making in the past, when we gave those awards at the end of the year, for some crazy reason, they decided that they, if only a certain number of awards came in in a category, you know, black and white architecture, if we got only five submissions in that category, we were only gonna give first place. So what we're doing now, instead of awarding based on quantity, we wanna shift this to a quality over, overview of things. So what we're, we will be doing is assigning a minimum total score for the different groups. So if you're an expert, you've gotta earn a few more points from those judges in order to get a first, second, third place award. If you're in the advanced, that number might be a little bit lower. And if you're a novice intermediate, you don't have quite as high a number to achieve. We don't quite know what the secret sauce is in that whole thing. So that's where the team, the end of year team is going to take the data and, and figure out where those breakpoints will fall. And again, you know, we're, we're learning as we go here and you know, trying to do our best to reward those merited images. And it's kind of following along the same lines. I know um, Linda is part of the PPA and PPA, and I think they're doing a similar thing with rewarding merited images. So if, for instance, we get 12 images that come into black and white architecture and all 12 of those score 26 points, we're gonna have a first, second and third, and then everybody else will have honorable mentions. So you're gonna get some kind of an award because they were really great photos. In the past, we might've only given first and second and everybody else was, you know, <laughs> down, you don't know what's going on. So that was a bit of our motivation to make those changes as a board. So let me pause here because I bet you there's some questions. Oh, okay. That's very cool. I'll throw in a question. Suppose, uh, so, uh, so with the scoring system, uh, let's say I enter expert category and uh, my numbers, I don't know, total 10 or something, you know, come in the lowest place of all. So I don't get the information. Linda, you, you just really, your, your image is really sucked and you got nothing, you know? <laughs> so in other words, there's a couple of awards given. Let's just say you just didn't get an award. That's it. You know, you don't say you got low. In other words, you came in last. <laughs> <laughs> then I won't really feel bad, right? So, I mean, is that how it works? Or do well, you say, do you until know we can get men on the totem pole? I mean, do I know I'm <laughs> the scoring one in the whole group? Unless there were only three people in there, you know what I mean? And two people got awards. Well, I don't know. Yeah. And that may, that may be the uh, the rationale for not giving those numbers out to people. It's like, well, we don't want to yeah. people to know who came in last. But right, right, right. You know, the Olympic okay. runners, you know, somebody crosses that tape first uh -huh. and somebody has to come across last. But we've never given the numbers out before. Yeah. But what we're hoping now is that there will be honorable mentions to photos that got nothing before, but they were really good photos. They were like one point below right, or right. Four third. And and we just we didn't give a place right. for that. Right. So again, I mean, if, we're still flushing it out. Okay. If so I you, can have, you have an idea. Linda's, well, go ahead. Linda. <laughs> well, you have an idea that if you didn't score high enough to get an honorable mention, you you scored less than whatever it is to get an honorable mention. I guess. Yeah, and that'll vary based on the group you're in. Right. Right. Uh, I think one of the things, um, the original the cat the 
criteria that were that was used in the past was it was very arbitrarily assigned that there would be you know a first, second, third, and then a specific number of honorable mentions, like Karen was alluding to, and it was you know sort of a, in my opinion it was always a square peg being hammered into a round hole in that regard, especially in categories like wildlife or what used to be wildlife and pictorial where you tend to have a lot of entries that, like, like Karen said there was a lot of good photos that just weren't getting any kind of recognition at all so that's one of the main points of that change is yes if it's a good photo it should be recognized as a good photo it doesn't matter how many photos it was competing against mm -hmm. it, it judge the photo not the group you know the photo within the group mm -hmm. and so that's where it is one of the things I've been toying with the idea of doing is, and I, and I haven't really, you know, kicked it over to the rest of the board is at some point, maybe taking the end of year spreadsheet once it's all said and done and just post a spreadsheet that has the title of the photo, the group it was in and the score and no names associated with it. And people will know their own submissions mm -hmm. titles. And that way, you know, if, if somebody got a, you know a, a, a you know a nine on on every single image they got submitted that you know nobody else necessarily knows that but it's it's an idea I've been kicking that's, around yeah, yeah. That's, so that's that would definitely. give you some mm -hmm. feedback uh -huh. yeah so we don't really know what the minimum do we have the minimum number of points you have to score to get say an honorable mention or whatever do we have that information or just kind of the judges. You all, whoever gives up the certificates, knows that, knows the number. There are some the number, targets though. that we have You're set, sheets. but then again, we don't know how tough the judges are going to be. So yeah. if you think about it as we, we've set a target, but it's not carved in stone. So yeah. if the judges are really, really, really tough, that number might go down. Or if they're really, really lenient, it might go up one or two. So again, that's why... It is the secret sauce. And, you know, yeah. we're kind of keeping that, you know, as part of the, the job of that end of year team to yeah. go and make it fair and equitable. Right. So no, hopefully okay. that. And that another sense. thing that Karen uh, didn't necessarily mention is also, it also plays the other way too, is if we got a bunch of submissions, but they all lacked technical merit, there may not even be a first place in the category now. Mm -hmm. If the judges decide their scores are low enough, we might say, well, the best thing, this one was a second place. And, mm -hmm. you know, so so it's an attempt to judge the images based on their own criteria, both good and bad. But in the end, I, it, I think people may be more satisfied simply because we're going, you know, a good photo should get something. You know, and, and but without being necessarily the quote unquote participate participation trophy, mm -hmm. it'll be, yeah, this was a good photo, so it, it gets it gets recognized as a good yeah. photo. Mm -hmm. So you would actually take the second place. Let's say nobody got the twenty seven points for the top award, so the second place person who was right under twenty seven would not even though they're the highest rated image, but they're not going to get a first place award. They would still be in the second place category. Well, yeah, but the numbers you're talking about more yeah. would be like the top rated one in the category was like, you know, 14 or something like that. Yeah, but right. Some right. Not, that, not, yeah, and they don't have to yeah. get 20. Yeah, they don't have to get 27 to get a first place. Eh? But you know, oh. they're going to be really, but yeah, it, it, the best one was a 14. We seriously have to consider whether that was yeah. the first place. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's not really a high, highly rated image. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let me get us back on. We're our our time is running, and so I just wanted to point out that um, once you, if you do enter the competition, that your photos hopefully will be seen on our CCR website. We will show them all on the Facebook page, and then what we're trying to do is make sure that they're seen in Southern Exposure as the as the winners. So by entering, you're giving us permission to, to post those photos. Now, I know um, time, is, time is a little tight, and I, like I said, I'll stick around. I'm going to skip over how you move up in the groups, because that might be another whole separate thing, because it really doesn't matter this year. I want to make sure we cover the naming convention, because I know that that's another thing that causes a lot of stress <laughs> for, um, for folks 
sending their photos in. Okay, and we're not also going to get into the resizing of the images in Lightroom and Photoshop because I'm I'm not an expert in Photoshop. I'm pretty good in Lightroom, but you know I don't want to get into the the nitty gritty of that. But we do have those two procedures that you see there. Um, how to resize. If you click those, they're hyperlinks and they'll take you to the step-by-step -step with um, pictures of the different screens in uh, Lightroom and Photoshop on how to resize your pictures. The important thing to remember is that the longest side of your image must not, must not exceed 1,920 pixels. What, okay, what, so is, what is the purpose of that? I am gonna throw that one to Michael. Because then all the images are being judged uh, against each other on the same criteria. Uh, you don't get a better image because it's larger, plus it's a, a larger file starts becoming more difficult to handle. But the takeaway from this for everyone is this doesn't change from the monthly submissions. So if your images saw or excise exactly the same as they were for the monthly ones. So if you, if you have it and you stored it and saved it, the only thing you have to change, if you're happy with the way it looks and you don't want to make any only thing you have to do is rename it and submit it you don't have to resize it for yearly it's the exact same size that you submitted mm -hmm. throughout the year okay and then the other really important piece of that is they have to be jpegs and really 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 would like them to have a dot jpg at the end of the file name not jpeg i'll just throw that out there really quick because as i believe michael so elegantly put it that the program throws up on its shoes if a JPEG with an E in it comes in. <laughs> so, um, trying to change that, but yes, it does. He's trying to fix that, but it was written prior to him by a dentist, I believe he said. <laughs> so somebody that wasn't all that knowledgeable on programs. So please, you know, when you rename that file, make sure it has the .jpg at the end. So let's talk about what that file name looks like. All right. What you see in red is the description of each portion of the file name. So inside those brackets, you see media type. Is it digital? Is it print? Well, this year, it's, that's what's really easy because it's always going to be a D. Um, the category that we just talked about. Remember, I mentioned those um, abbreviations that were in parentheses. So animals is A-N. So that would be your category. Your, your category. Then that color that we talked about, black and white or color, what group you decide you wanna be in, this is where the rubber hits the road, you gotta pick, you know, which one do you want? Then your image title, whether it's standard or wildcard and your name. So that's the order that things come in. Now let's, let's talk about the specifics of that with a real file name down here. So if we decipher that, the example file name that we gave is a digital image, the D. It's going into landscape category, which is the L. It's a color image. I'm in group A. The title of my image is on a clear day. It is a wild card, WC as opposed to ST for standard. And my name is Karen Davis and it's .jpg. Now you'll notice that those are underscores on, on my PC keyboard. I have to hit the shift key and there's a dash and an underscore. It's ne right next to my zero key on my keyboard. I know you can see me pointing to that right here. Um, so we wanna make sure we use underscores because again, a lot of this is automated for Michael. The program simply takes the, the attachments to your email when they come into him and it, it sorts things into the proper category. So the naming convention is really, really important to try and handle those hundreds of images that are coming in. All right, so let me stop here and see if there are any questions. Oh, I see three in the chat. I can see the chat. I found out how to find that. JPEG can, yes, be in uppercase. It's not case sensitive, so either way. All right, and uh, somebody had to run. That's fine. That was Anita. Bye, Anita. <laughs> and case doesn't matter. Yeah, Michael already answered that one. Okay, but keep in mind, if you win some big awards and you get the certificate, the certificate is going to say on a clear day, first place, blah, 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 I wish. Um, so you wanna make sure that it's 
in your title the way you want it to show up on your fabulous frameable certificate that you'll get for winning first place. Um, so I would stay away from all caps. It just it makes me think you're yelling at me and it just drives me nuts. I twitch when I see all caps. <laughs> but the dot JPEG doesn't matter if it's in caps. In J yeah, that doesn't matter. And same with your name. You know, I would yeah. use title case for the name. Um, notice right above that where we talk about that you are using underscores. If there happens to be a dash in your name, like my last name were Taylor Dash Davis, which it isn't, um, put the dash in. Or if there's a dash in your title, um, your image is called cross-eyed and you know there's a dash in the word cross-eyed, please use the dash. That was the main reason we switched a few years ago and went to the underscores so that the program could more easily um, differentiate and not get hung up on legitimate dashes um, because we had dashes in there anyway. <laughs> kind of long story, but yeah, so that, that's the way you do it. Um, you can do it in Lightroom, you can do it in Photoshop. You could actually go into your file manager in Windows. I don't do Apple, so I don't know how you do it in an Apple, go find an Apple person. <laughs> they can explain that one to you. Michael's a PC guy too. So unfortunately we, we can and only speaking, give you the- <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of that, be, be very careful with international characters and odd ones be especially if you're using a mac uh like uh somebody submitted one with a spanish enye and um it it comes from a pc up to google drive back down to a pc and characters like that sometimes get scrambled so just be cautious and very careful if you're going to use anything outside of normal you know, ASCII, but having said that, ampersands are okay, uh, quotes, uh, uh, single quotes, double quotes, dashes, uh, all those are good, you know, but it's got to be something that can be part of a file name. Other than that, it's mostly good. Just don't use an underscore in your name, in your file name. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So that's, this is kind of where the, the rubber meets the road. We, we want you to be successful with this. And as Michael said earlier, if you get it in early and the, his program does <laughs> throw up on its shoes or you know whatever, we can help you with it. You know, he can come back and he's really great about that is come back and say, hey, you know, you, you forgot the media type or you know, instead of standard or wildcard, you left that out or whatever. And he, you know, can help you with it. But when we get down to that deadline or past the deadline, you know, we're crunching trying to get all this stuff ready for the judges. So it's, it makes it really hard. So. And also on, on that same point, um, because every time you submit a message, I might have the Google account set to send an automated reply a lot of times people's mail clients will perceive that as spam. And so my replies, my automated replies start getting sent to spam or junk mail folders. Look in those when you submit these because the only, if there's a problem, I'm going to send you a, a message myself, an email myself. And if, if your email client or your email host has determined that anything coming from digital.cc RVA is spam. It might get to spam. You may not see that. I can't accept your photo for the following reason. So please make a point of looking in your spam or your junk mail or whatever for any reply. If you don't see any replies from me, um, I won't, other than the automated reply, if everything's good, you won't hear anything from me. You know, no news is good news. I can't respond to, you know, I think it was like 700 and some odd emails last year. So I wow. uh, can't reply to those individually, but I will always, always send an email if there is a problem. And um, so please make a point of looking in your junk mail and your spam just in case something is squirrely and your email client, your email host has decided I, I'm spam. Just check please, or else you won't hear from me and then, then you know, <laughs> you don't get your image into the submit into the competition. Right. Previously, you, previously submitted photos uh, can be re-edited and, and, you know, process uh, again correctly, correct? Absolutely, yes. Especially if the um, evaluator gave you some helpful hints, you know, I'd crop it here or I'd lighten right, this. Yeah. yeah, you know, feel free to, um, to tweak those 
and, and get them ready for end of year. Exactly. All right, so when, once your images are all ready to go, this is how they go. You want to address your emails to digital.ccrva at gmail.com. And Michael, does this still hold true? Send them two or three at a time? Yeah, in fact, uh, somebody was just asking that. Um, yeah, the more the better. I was just responding to the chat and that. Um, people seem to have success sending about six at a time, if you, if you know them. I okay. don't think anybody's had any trouble with them getting bounced, which also going back to your uh, previous question, Kim, that's another reason to keep the, the uh, images size down because that way they're much easier to send through email. If you get too big, you know, they'll start getting bounced. So okay. um, yeah, uh, please try not to do one at a time. Um, I can process those, but that makes a lot more work for me. I, it's a lot easier for me if they're in a big group in an email and I can just pull them down, peruse them, route them where they need to go. And um, it makes the flow, workflow a lot easier. So like I said, try six. Uh, if, if you have a question, that's like I said, I've seen, I've been getting a lot with, with no problem, six photos at a time. Okay. So All right. I'll, I'll amend this <laughs> for next year. But, but what, I mean, there's different email clients and depending on things, so, but yeah, if, but preferably multiple ones, if you can, if mm -hmm. it doesn't work for whatever reason, and the only way you can do it is one at a time, then send them one at a time. You know, I don't want you mm -hmm. not to submit them, but it does, ma does make it easier on me if you can submit as many as possible in a single email. Okay. All right. That's good. Then once they're all in, we talked about the judging process. Um, the judges will, will go through their thing and assign scores to them. We've got these humongous spreadsheets that, that keep that all that information. The judges, if there are any ties, the judges resolve those ties. Um, we mentioned about you know first, second, third place awards, honorable mentions, et cetera. One thing I did wanna point out is that um, you know, we've got the different groups, but in the assigned subjects, all of the groups are gonna be judged together. So it's not like we'll have a novice group assigned subjects and then the you know advanced group assigned they're they're all those are all judged together but within the other categories we do break that down by group and as we said you know first second third honorable mentions etc you know based on the the ranking of those scores that they earn <coughs> excuse me all righty um then the winners of the individuals will go together for our best color digital, best black and white digital, best assigned subject, and then there will be a best in show. So those are the four um, big awards that we get at the end of the year. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a tickle. Okay, and let's see, I see another question. I think Michael answered that about how many at a time. Um, all right. <laughs> I was being optimistic and did not bring my power cord up here. So I am going to have to run and get my power cord. Guys, think about it. if you have any other questions. I'll tell you what, let me launch the poll. <coughs> I have a little bit of a follow-up poll here at the end. So let me stop my share. And Michael, just in case I get lost, I'm going to make you the host. <coughs> okay. <laughs> just in case it shuts me out. <coughs> uh, and I'm not finding my poll. Oh no. Well, the poll has disappeared. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that this was helpful. Um, let me go grab my power cord. If you have any specific questions, run them by Michael and I'll be right back. Is it the session feedback one? Yeah, that's it. Launch it. You made me host, so I guess I have to do it. Oh, that's one. Okay. <laughs> so while we're waiting for Karen, is there any, are there any other questions? I guess 
guess I kind of have a question um, because I've, I'm new to this. I have never done it before and I've, I've already submitted my, my uh, entries, but I feel sort of uncomfortable in the, in the, cat, the group that I chose to put myself in. So if, if I'm not happy with that, can I put myself in a lower group next year? Um, yes, you, you would have to um, ask the board you know, but uh, yeah, they've made, uh, there's allowances been made for that idea that people may, because this is a new year and, and a lot of things that, uh, yeah, there may be some, but yeah, basically just, uh, you know, request, tell the, you know, the board um, that you were maybe over, you know, shot the mark and would like mm -hmm. to drop down. So, but yeah, there is a mechanism in place for that. We haven't worked out all the details, but I have a feeling it'll probably be pretty informal. Yeah. Yeah. So feel free. All right. I saw the poll was up. Thank you, Michael. All right. And we appreciate you doing that. So this is kind of the formal part of it and the things that I thought were most important to get across. But I'm, like I said, I'm willing to hang around longer if, if anybody wants to get into the weeds with um, how the points are going to be accumulated and how you move up or whatever. Um, I can hang around, or if you have some specific questions about stuff. Um, it is set up so that if individuals can share their screen, if you say, hey, I got this picture I want you to look at, you know, I can hang around and, you know, we can look at them for you. So how's everybody feeling? I love seeing all the smiling faces. So I got a <laughs> thumbs up from Linda. I like that. <laughs> you know, I've been curious about those, what, four or five big awards you give at the end, the, all these names of people. I've never heard of these people. I think maybe I read what they were somewhere, but I totally forgot. Do you know who is so and so Yoder Award or whatever? Oh yeah, Rose Award. I mean, what what a who are these? Who people? are they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we I know. Don't know. Are they famous photographers or people who they donated were. money or something? Or I don't know. They oh. were. Um, in fact, that was on my to do list when I only had one job, and then when I got two jobs in the club, it kind of fell off my to do list. But I kind of put Carol um, Hageman because she's been a member. What, what do we 30 years, 30 yeah. plus years? Yeah. He knew a lot of these people. They yeah, were the yeah, founders. The club was founded, oh, yeah. The club yeah, was founded ahead, in 32. And so, yeah, these are a lot of previous mm -hmm. board members and old. Oh. Uh, so, you got, you got a really good question in the chat, Karen. We did not address. Uh oh, okay. What did I miss? <laughs> if I don't have enough credits, can I still move up in the category? Um, and actually, I think what you're asking is in the group, because remember categories are architecture, landscape, blah, blah, blah. The groups, the credits are going to be what we're going to use to have you move from group to group to group. Yeah, and, I meant the groups. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we're still using the wrong words because we had to come up with something. They were, they were calling these things points. And I'm like, we got too many points floating around. We're going to call them credits. I like stars, but they didn't like my idea of stars. <laughs> so we're calling those credits. So yes, that is a, that's a really great question because you can move up anytime you want. So we've had people come in the club in the past that said, oh, I'm, I'm not a beginning photographer. I'm going to go straight into the A group. So we can have folks come in and say, I want to go straight into expert. You know, I want to compete with the big guys, uh, the big dogs. So yes, you can, you can move up at any point in time. And as Michael said, you know, moving down, we want to talk about it <laughs> before you move down again. So, but I think for the first couple of years, as people start to settle in where they think they belong, we're going to be pretty lenient about, you know, going, going up or down. So feel free if you want to just jump right into that expert category, or if, you know, just came to the club and you want to jump into A, hey, go for it. In fact, so, we had a relatively new member has already submitted for this year and, and submitted in expert. So that exact scenario has happened. All right. I love it. Okay. Well, it's, it's sounding like that, you know, from the poll that, that people are feeling a little bit more comfortable about things. So yay, my, my teacher heart is, <laughs> is, is glad that we were able to answer some questions and, uh, and go over those. But um, in any other last minute things or questions 
Um, and as we said, you know, our, our um, board members, it's right there on the website. If you need to get in touch with any of the board members, the, um, the email addresses are all pretty similar, you know, digital.ccrva at you know, gmail. Um, prez is pres.ccrva. Um, our print director would be willing to help you. You know, he's kind of twiddling his thumbs out there because there aren't any prints, but you know, uh, Leo has just started a new job. So he may be a little bit harder to, to, to get right you know, in the next few weeks till things settle in. All right. Any other questions, comments? All right, I am going to stop the recording. I think I can do that.